This isn't a bad setup. <laughs> I was just going to ask you what I, you I thought about I just thought it. maybe you have a, where's the clicker and the uh, <laughs> high def TV in the back? We're ready to go. I feel like I'm in my living room. Well, we wanted to, this oh, is our. My wife would be sitting by me, not you. <laughs> All right. This is our fireside chat. Sure. Coach DeMarco, let's talk Geneva football. All right. Over the past two seasons, your team has lost seven games by one score or less, and another five games by two scores or less. What does Geneva need to do, need to improve upon this season, in order to turn those close losses into victories? Well, I think coaches uh, have already talked about process and uh, understanding what perseverance is, understanding when you see adversity, the best thing you can do is just continue to improve, continuous improvement. You see it in the business world all the time and, and, and trying to produce quality. Um, but uh, we've got to uh, basically adhere to the first rule of coaching, and that is thou shalt not beat thyself. Uh, we've, we've got to really take that at heart. Uh, and I think number two is uh, we need to recruit more players like this guy here on our left. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Players win, and administrations win championship. And as coaches, we're put in a position to be able to fall in line with what our administrations want to do. Uh, but you can't have too many of these guys. You lost a pretty good running back last year, Teron Marshall, to graduation. A player who finished his career as the school's all-time leading rusher. How do you go about trying to fill that lost production and who are you looking to in order to, to step up and fill that void? Well, I, I, I think most of the guys in this room have been in this situation. And uh, it just means th the other guys are going to have to step up and show the responsibility. And we've got young men that are very capable. Um, it's not a concern. Uh, we had a luxury. We we're running the triple option, and we basically gave it to one guy. Now we're going to go back to running the triple option. We're, that thing's going to go to either three people. So we're really, uh, really excited about what's going on. You returned 10 starters on the defensive side of the ball and another nine starters on offense. Does that impact your expectations coming into the year? Well, our expectations never change. I mean, uh, as, as far as what we talk about, as far as goals, is you prepare like for a, a champion every day. You win the game that week and you try to be the best team in December. I mean, th those are the goals that we've had for 20, 27 years, regardless of we won championships or what we've gone through in the last four years. Uh, it, it's, it's the same thing. But having the experience and having young men that understand leadership, we put a premium on leadership. I'm uh, thankful for Andrew DiDonato and how he absolutely uh, is so public about his Christian faith. And let's, let's not kid ourselves, we're a Christian school. The only reason I'm in coaching is basically God's called me to this. Uh, our, our motto for many years, our motto or theme or whatever, has been more than conquerors, which means it's more than winning. It's more than just what happens on the field. I used to think when I was a young hotshot and older guys would say that they were going through losing times, that you know that was loser talk. And the truth is, what we're trying to do is, is to continue in what we believe is a program. It hasn't changed from day one, whether we were you know, winning championships or losing seven, eight games, whatever it's been in the last two years by one, one possession. Uh, the, the expectations are still there. And uh, yeah, we'll get to work you know, sometime next week to get it done. Coach, last question for you. I mentioned earlier this is your 27th year as the head coach at Geneva. In the 34th year, you've been in collegiate coaching. In light of that, how do you measure your success as a coach? Like we talked about, not just in terms of, of victories and in terms of losses, but the kind of impact you've had on the lives of young people you've had the chance to coach. Uh, you, you guys know that all these questions are basically set up by our SIDs in advance, right? So this one, this one um, uh, is kind of like a softball. So. <laughs> the bottom line is this, uh, you, you coach for so many different reasons. And let's not kid ourselves, because the 10 guys in this room that are head coaches, this is the closest thing to playing, all right? And every one of us detests losing, all right? I couldn't wait, to, you know, I can't wait till we get to camp. 
I, I can't wait to get this over with. This day, to me, is not one of my favorite days. Everybody sits and talks about well, all kind of toys they have, whatever, blah, blah, blah. We're going to vote on who's going to have it. And honestly, we should just call the end of the season the end of the, that's it. I mean, because you guys have already decided who's going to win. But, but as far as being a competitor every day, and you wake up, when you lose, it just, it, 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 it eats at you. A piece of you dies. It, it's just the way it is. And, and we take it from a standpoint of learning. How do you learn? How, how, how can we learn from it? Uh, how do you overcome adversity? I mean, you want to talk about what success is. You've got two different ideas, what the world says, you know, and what we believe as Christians. And as we believe as Christians is this. In Romans 8.37, it says there's nothing nothing that can come into our life that can separate us from the love of God. That's great. I listened to that. That's, our, that's, that's what we built our program on. Our More Than Conquerors leadership manual is based on character, attitude, responsibility, and effort. But as a competitor, as a competitor, you want to be able to look and know that when you take the field, you're going to win. And that's the difference between this year and years in the last three. The guys that we have right now, uh, we got 19 starters back. We're missing one of the greatest guys we've had. Somebody's going to fill in. Somebody will take its place. And I guarantee you this, when we stay healthy and it's going to happen, we'll be at the top of the pack. That, it's that simple. I'm done. Thank you, Coach DeMarco. <laughs> there is never. <laughs> Never a dull moment with Coach DeMarco. Well, at least I answered your question. You did great. Thanks. And, and this isn't going anywhere, so plan on coming back next year. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler, a couple questions for you. You tied for the lead in the PAC in interceptions last season from your linebacker position, while also leading Geneva in tackles. What do you see as your role on defense this year, and how often do you envision playing a little bit closer to the line to help against the rush against dropping back into coverage? Yeah, I mean, um, last year I had a pretty decent year, but obviously as a team we didn't we didn't end up how we wanted to, and I think that's going to change this year. But I think uh, my position on the defense right now, I need to be a leader, become more of a vocal leader. I kind of years past, I kind of was lead by example, but I think this year I need to be more of a vocal leader and uh, be a leader to these freshmen. And then um, with the pass run, it's kind of week to week, depending on who we play, if I'm in the box or if I'm dropping back. So. As the 2018 season progressed, you began to take over punt return duties. Uh, pretty unusual role for a linebacker. How'd that come about, and how do you think your skill set matches up with that sort of responsibility? Um, well, yeah, there's a little, uh, kind of started as a joke. I, I would, before <laughs> practice, I would kind of just sit, sit around back there and just catch punts. And then one of the coaches asked me if I ever caught a punt before, and I might have told a little lie and said I did in high school. First ever punt I caught was in a college game. But uh, I mean, it, it's a fun, it's a fun experience. I mean, all I have to do is catch the ball. I don't think Coach DeMarco expects me to be returning them any any time. But I mean, it's a fun. Not, don't expect any big ones this year. Uh, maybe, maybe one. Okay. Hopefully. With ten starters returning on defense, talk a little bit about your expectations for that side of the ball heading into the season. Yeah, I and think. Talk about uh, talk about your what you feel your team's strength defensively is in 2019. Um, as strength, I think it's experience. Like, like you said, we have 10 coming back. Um, what I expect from our defense is to be physical. I want us to be the physical, uh, most physical defense out, out on the field each week. You don't have to be skilled to be physical. Um, really looking for uh, a couple kids who, who played a little bit last year, who's going to be starting this year to really make an impact. And I think we're going to be a pretty solid defensive unit. Tyler, last question for you. What are some things you're going to take away from your time at Geneva? your time on the football field, your time as a student, as you prepare for graduation in the next stages of your life? Mm -hmm. Like Coach Marco said, it's a Christian college, so I grew, uh, grew a lot in my faith over these last four years, and I can't speak enough about how uh, great uh, education program and education major that Geneva has. A lot of people think Geneva Engineering, but I really think our education program does a great job. Our professors there do a great job preparing me, and um, all the relationships I made throughout uh, my four years in uh, football and just in the classroom. So. I really enjoyed my four years at uh, Geneva, and hopefully last one will be a good one. Coach Tyler, thank you, gentlemen. Geneva will open the season Saturday, September 7th at Mount St. Joseph University.